Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video, we are going to talk about volcanic landforms. Volcanic landforms are controlled by those processes or geological processes that created them and will act on them after they have formed. So a given volcanic landform will be characteristic of the types of materials it is made of, which in turn depends on the prior eruptive behavior of the volcano. So based on this description, how many types of volcanic landforms are there? Well, we have quite few. We have shield volcanoes, we have cinder cones, we have calderas, and we have composite volcanoes. So let's talk about each of these in more detail. The first one is shield volcano. What are shield volcanoes? Well, shield volcanoes are produced by the accumulation of fluid basaltic lavas in the shape of slightly doomed structure resembling a warrior's shield. So in shield volcanoes, contrary to your experience, it's not a cone, it's not a steep mountain, but actually it's in the shape of a shield or a warrior's shield. That's why it's called shield volcanoes. Shield volcanoes have an upper slope that are around five degrees, in this area it's about 5 degrees and in the lower parts it's about 10 degrees. Shield volcanoes are composed almost entirely of relatively thin lava flows built up over a central vent. So under this area usually you have low viscous basaltic magma that flow easily down slope when it comes out. Shield volcanoes are not very eruptive therefore you don't have a lot of pyroclastic material flying out except near the eruptive vents where small amounts of pyroclastic material accumulate as a result of fire mounting events. An example of a shield volcano will be Mauna Lua in Hawaii that is one of five volcanoes that form the island of Hawaii in the United States. This is a picture of Mauna Lua in Hawaii. The Mauna Lua is considered to be the largest sub-aerial volcano in both mass and volume. It's an active shield volcano with relatively gentle slopes and it has a volume about 18,000 cubic miles, 75,000 kilometers cube, and its peak is about 120 feet. So shield volcanoes, just like as you can see in this picture, they are not cone shaped, but they are shaped like a warrior's shield and the upper part is about 5 degrees and the lower part is about 10 degrees. And you have lava underneath and it will not be eruptive when it comes out. So this is about shield volcanoes. Let's talk about another volcanic landform and that is cinder cones. So what are cinder cones? Well, cinder cones, or sometimes it's called scoria cones, are built from ejected lava fragments that begin to harden having a black to reddish brown color. They have a cone shape. So just like as you can see in this picture, cinder cones are by the name, they are shaped like a cone and the ejected material are most of the time scoria, the rock that you've been introduced to. That's why most of the time it's called scoria cones. Most of the time scoria cones are composed of basaltic to andesitic material with predominantly ash and scoria as I mentioned and the reason for this is scoria cones or cinder cones are mildly eruptive and they eject material that are full of basaltic and andesitic as I mentioned and they surround the vent which gives it the cone shape. Concerning the shape of the vent it is a cone with sides having an angle between 25 and 35 degrees. On young cones, you have a depression at the top of the cone that is called a crater. Just like here, you have depression that is called a crater. But on old cones, the crater is usually eroded away. So cinder cones is just a volcanic landform that has a cone shape. The sides are about 25 to 35 degrees. And most of the time you have scoria ejecting from the vent. That's why it's called scoria cones. Another type of volcanic landforms that we have is caldera volcanoes. So what are caldera volcanoes? Well, caldera volcanoes are just like cinder cones, but these volcanoes are much larger. Cinder cones, the crater or the mouth of the volcano is about one kilometer, usually under one kilometer. But caldera volcanoes are huge. They have huge mouth, they have a huge crater, and they are usually between one to 50 kilometers, sometimes way bigger than 50 kilometers. So caldera volcanoes are larger depressions that are circular to elliptical with diameters ranging from one kilometer to 50. Calderas form as a result of a collapse 
of volcanic structure due to collapse resulting from the evacuation of the underlying magma chamber. So usually you have a big mouth like this and the result that it will collapse is you have a magma chamber underneath and when an evacuation of this magma chamber happens, your whole entire structure above will depress and will be collapsed. This is why you have big mouth like this and a depression. This is a picture of Mount Longonot in Kenya. And as you can see, the crater of this volcano is huge. The diameter is about two kilometers. So you can imagine how big it is and how bigger it is than cinder cones. Another example of a caldera volcano will be Yellowstone caldera. Yellowstone caldera is way bigger than Mount Longanut's caldera. Yellowstone caldera is 50 by 70 kilometers. So as you can see in this picture, this is the caldera of Yellowstone and it's huge. If this caldera or if this volcano erupts, it will cover a very, very large area with ash and pyroclastic material. It will be four to five times bigger than Mount St. Helens eruption. Another type or the last type of volcanic landforms that we have is composite volcanoes. So what are composite volcanoes? Well, composite volcanoes are Earth's most beautiful yet potentially dangerous volcanoes. The reason it's called composite volcanoes is underneath you have a lot of layers of lava that interconnect. That's why they are called composite because all of them come together to create a volcano. So composite volcanoes, sometimes it's called strata volcanoes, show interlaying of lava flow and pyroclastic material underneath. Pyroclastic material can make up over 50% of the volume of strata volcanoes. Lavas and pyroclastics are usually andesitic to rhyolitic in composition. And due to the higher viscosity of magma erupted from the volcano, they are usually more explosive than shield volcano. This is an example of Mount Visavus in Italy. There are pictures of the remaining of an eruption where the mountain erupted a long, long time ago and it solidifies people and the city around it innocently. So it's very, very dangerous due to having interlayers of magma and pyroclastic materials that can make the volcano extremely eruptive besides having an andesitic to rhyolitic composition that are very, very viscous. So composite volcanoes are Earth's most beautiful yet potentially dangerous volcanoes. And with this, we come to the end of our lecture. So to recap the entire lecture,